Hello lovely friends. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. I'm going to just be a bit upside down for a second and therefore my voice might go funny. This isn't the job that I specifically came to do today, but it is the job that I forgot to do on my last visit at the end of my last visit and that is yuck get out these leaves with can you make that out there's aphids on them yuck 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 um there's a big bunch oh my goodness am i going to be snipping the plants stripping them completely. Hopefully this is going to be enough. It's an absolutely beautiful afternoon. It's just gone noon. I planned to get down nice and early today, but the sky was black. And I thought any second now it's gonna chuck down. It didn't. We had, hold on a second. Oh, let me finish this, it's upside down and then I'll talk to you properly. That's better. It's nigh on impossible to be upside down doing that and talking at the same time. Um, yeah, what I was saying was, I, I've been making it a habit to come in the morning and do the physical stuff down here to warm myself up whilst the flat is warming up gradually from the sun. Black, black, black this morning. We'd had rain all night. I heard it all night. Lovely sound. Anyway, got to about noon and I thought, the clouds aren't doing anything. Let's just go to the garden anyway. And as I, I come down a road and then I sort of turn a corner into a park, walk through the park and then into the um, allotment site. And just as I turned to go into the park. Oh my goodness, I was stopped in my tracks by the beauty. The sun's just starting to come out. It's quite low, obviously at this time of year. So I don't know if it was partly to do with that, but, and also we've had a ton of rain. The grass at the edge of the park, it just looked gorgeous. It was so green. It was the definition of green, glowing so beautiful and I stood and I looked at it for a second or two you know we take grass for granted don't we <laughs> it's something we walk on it's something we play games on it's something we sit on when we're having a picnic but in that split second oh it was so beautiful what's not beautiful look at that isn't that it's just vile 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 disgusting far too many to even try to squish off i mean that's the whole of the top of the plant most of the plant so some of them i've cut right down and i'm just hoping that they will sprout again and it will get well you see here's the dilemma i want it to get properly cold the aphids don't want to come out and play but on the other hand i don't want it to be properly cold because then people are going to struggle with the heating ah let's just hope they sprout back and that's it with the aphids like I mentioned before we all saw what happened with Paul's Paul's were just decimated um, but he was bringing some new seedlings of Portuguese cabbage on so hopefully they've done the trick now there's a couple of uh, I'm here for the main job today it's time for the squash harvest, yay! <laughs> um, what I forgot to say in the tour was that I leave my squash for as long as possible and the possible is frost. So I just leave them be for as long as I can until there's a danger of frost and then I lift them and get them home. Um, the reason I leave them as long as possible is the longer I leave them, the, the tougher the skins get. It's, the skins are curing. 
So they've they sort of reached maturity by way of size a few weeks ago. They ripened, you know, they've changed their colour. You can see they've got their permanent colour now. And then once they've got to that proper colour that I want them to be, it's at that point I think, right, yeah, hopefully we'll get three or four weeks of sunshine, a bit of warmth, and that will cure those skins, make the skins good and tough, which helps them to store longer. So, um, but, I mean, the weather forecast has our nighttime temperatures hovering around 10 degrees. I mentioned on Facebook the other day that I was leaving them as long as possible and people all over the country have been saying they've had their first frosts so people up north which I you know I'd, I kind of expect but there was someone in Cornwall someone in Dorset if they're having frosts already I don't trust the forecast that it is going to be 10 at night I've said before I've got a bit of a microclimate going on here but you know what the game of dare is over <laughs> I'm not going to risk it anymore it's important food so I'm going to harvest them. But first, because we've had rain, a lot of it last night, I'm going to do another job that's preparation for another job next week. But I can do a bit of preparation for it right now. So come on, let's go and do a little job before we get stuck in to the best harvest of the year. <laughs> it's not it's not food Rosie, it's chicken poo. <laughs> you definitely don't want this. So um, because both of these beds have worked hard all summer, when did the tomatoes go in in the end? End of June, so July, August, September, bit of October. So it's nearly four months these beds have been working hard and well you can see how well the tomatoes did. So I'm just doing a bit of chicken poo. Um, oh, before I re-sow broad beans, garlic, just help them on. But also because the broad beans and the garlic will be in, let's see now, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. A good seven months plus. So yeah, a little bit now. Um, I don't, I don't then give the broad beans anything until I harvest them. In the past, I have them with the garlic. I'll give them a top dressing of the chicken poo come about February or so, I'll do another top dressing. But I'm also making the most of, um, hang on a sec, I've just, I've just seen RK, quick word with RK. <sighs> That's a nice, quick little catch up. Yes, yeah, so the other thing I'm trying to make the most of is the fact that we've had a lot of rain last night so the ground's good and moist. I'll do the other bed in a second, otherwise I won't be able to speak to you with my back turned. Ground's good and moist because the pellets are all dried. Um, oh. It just helps them just helps them to get underway. And I think we'll probably do more rain, which will also help. Um, just help to start uh, what's it called reconstituting melting them again fab not too much of a rake also <laughs> oh my goodness the weeds the weeds are terrible they've gone mad they've gone absolutely mad it's like if there was a weed version of x factor it's like someone's come along to the garden and shouted to any of the weeds in the seed. By the way, the X Factor, you know, producers are coming along to audition you all. So they've all gone, ta-da! <laughs> I'm not going to do the weeds today. That's not what, listen, I'm not going to spend four hours weeding when they're squashed to harvest. So, yeah. But actually it's a good time to weed because the ground is moist so I think I'll come back within the next couple of days without the camera just to concentrate on weeding. Weeding, strimming, strimming, trimming again. I don't know if you can see from there how long that grass is already. Eesh. Okay, 
that will do. Actually, oh dear. Just, just doing this little bit of raking um, is also quite reassuring that that this ground isn't too rock hard when I do come to sow because ideally what I'll do using my hoe on its side like this is you can't see from there can you but on its side like that drag it is form a drill to just ding 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 scatter all the seeds in like I said the other day I'm not going to do anything in this garden which will involve me let me get back here and find you. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything in this garden that involves me digging. So like I was saying for next year, there won't be any potatoes because potatoes involve digging. No digging, low maintenance, as low as I can get it. Right, I'm going to get that other bed done and then I should we go and do some hunting for some, um, for some yumminess. Yay! So if you don't get comfy, I need that one. Sorry, sweetie. <laughs> you go back. Oh. There's another little job that I nearly forgot about. Cover this bit of the bed that had oh, yeah. that had all the tomato mulch put onto it. Drop and drop. Oh, God, about it. And then, for now, that'll do. That'll keep it down if we get a bit gusty. Okay, right. Oh, that is going to keep it down. Brick, weight. Then the main attraction today. Yay! Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. It really is my oh, favourite harvest of the year, every year. Partly because throughout most of the summer I've got no idea what I'm going to get <laughs> by way of oh, blah, by way of sort of size shape how many when I'm trying a new type what color even so I'm going to talk a bit more, well, I'm going to talk <laughs> You know the other thing, who was it said this, was it, was it Alison? I think might have said it when I was doing my onion harvest um, that any harvest which, which requires a wheelbarrow you've got to count as a good harvest <laughs> so I am Yeah, what I'll do is I'm going to quickly get these picked not spend too long out here with the picking. Sorry, I had my back to you. Not spend too long out here with the picking. Because it's a bit awkward up, down, up, down, trying to talk. Get them all picked. We'll reconvene at the table for the annual photograph. My table's much smaller now. Eek. And then I'll chat a little bit about um, care by way of storing. Prep for storage. So. I'm going to go and grab the butternuts, but what I'm really, really looking forward to getting are the uh, Mosquée de Provence and the Long Island cheese. Come on, come with me. Oh, <laughs> if I can get out of this bed. Oh, in one piece. 
no, I haven't missed a couple. <laughs> Coming back for them. Look. <laughs> That's not even a preemie. <laughs> In case you're wondering why I've just referenced preemies, it's because I always guess to make my weights in terms of neonates. I think the Muscade de Provence are going to be two neonates each. Right, around here, come on. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, Jay. Oh. Hoppla. Second mosquito. And oh, <laughs> it really is going to be a heavy barrow. Hang on. Last but not least. A little, a little bit of cheese from Long Island. It's got a mucky bottom. Brilliant. God, that's heavy. Uh, right. <sighs> Time to get this lot. It's going to put me shears in that. I'm not going to do that though. Time to get this lot back to the shed. Come on. It. it isn't. Oh, <laughs> thank you, real. It is all gonna sit on the table. Gotcha. Oh, Whew. let's have a sit down. Well, they certainly did not all fit on the table. But oh, what a happy sight! Lolly, lolly, lolly. And you know what? Considering this was a bad year, I think that's pretty good for bad. <laughs> Yay! Oh, I need to sit down now. Tell you what, these ones are monsters. Do you remember, it, this is weird actually, that was the one that was upside down, so that's why it's so mucky there. But I was saying I'd moved the Muscay, one of the Muscay de Provence, in from the path for me to strim. I lifted it all oh, heavy. I moved the Long Island cheese out of the path into the bed, and I said it was about half as light. Well, amazingly, in the intervening hmm, about four weeks now, it's really heavy. So I'm hoping that means that inside it's fleshed up but oh lovely lovely gorgeous yummy squash right let's have a sit and a chat yay <laughs> the annual gurning happy shot with the squash oh i tell you what well you can tell i've taken my card off i didn't half warm up okay so just quickly where to put me glasses there we go <laughs> now the Muscade de provence can see you so, what I didn't talk about when I was up, down, up, down, bending to um, harvest them is to harvest them with a chunk of stalk. People will often talk about having a tea of stalk. You can see it's almost a tea. It's really important when you're harvesting to look after your stalks. Don't knock them off because where the stalk joins the body of the fruit, that it's quite a soft little area. That's the area that's going to rot if you lose your stalk. People talk about, oh, when is the right time to harvest? You know what? You've probably... Excuse the building work noise. You've probably all harvested by now, but for future reference, um, the, the stalk is really pretty tough. People talk about waiting until it feels cork-like. So all the time, all through the summer, that was sort of soft and fleshy. Now it's really hard on all of them. And you can hear it when you snip, it's crunch. You want it to be hard, good. The skin, I was talking about 
um, leaving them out as long as possible to cure the skins. In an immature skin, if you press your thumbnail in, you 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 could you could actually pierce the skin. You'll certainly make a quite a scratch in it. Whereas at this stage, I'm not going to pierce that skin. Well, I I could if I pushed really 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 hard. Of course I could, like a, with a knife. But I'm happy with the toughness of the skin. Now, oh, <laughs> I got really warm. It's humid. Uh, you know what it is, of course, we've had sunshine on really, really wet ground, it's evaporating. I'm basically gardening in a sauna. In terms of storing them, because I do store them long term, I've got a couple from last year still to use. All I will do is give them a bit of a clean, just a damp cloth, no soap, nothing like that on it. In the past I used to use a couple of drops of tea tree oil in my water, squish it around to wipe them with that because it's an antimicrobial. I don't even bother with that these days, partly because I ran out of tea tree oil <laughs> about two years ago and I didn't replace it. So yeah, a damp cloth, give them a wipe all over, don't scrub them, don't be too vigorous. Remember this skin, it's like I was talking about I think with potatoes recently, is the storage packet. We don't want to mar the integrity of this storage packet at all. So be a bit gentle. Think of it like, in terms of neonates, think about that first bath you give to a baby. You don't scrub the baby. You just let the water go over it. No harsh chemicals. So yeah, get them, give them a bit of a clean up. If you've got where I've, where I've cut them, in some areas, there's a, there's a bit too much stalkage. So you can give them a bit of a tidy up. Oh, can't, that one's a bit soggy, that bit of stalk. That's not the, that wasn't the growing stem, that's where a leaf was coming. Some of where the leaves are coming are still a little bit wet. But yeah, give them a, give them a bit of a tidy up in the stalk area if you want, but do not, again, don't damage the integrity of the stalk. And then really, quite simply, store them above freezing. So for me, these will all come home and they'll go <laughs> anywhere I've got space, back of the wardrobe, under the bed, a uh, big basket full in the kitchen. The only thing I would watch for is if you've grown a new variety that you haven't stored before, keep a close eye. So for instance, with the butternuts, the butternuts I always use last because they always store for ages. You know, there's, there's a part of me with those two I've got at home, which are butternuts, with, the, with one of them is to just continue storing it, see how long it would store for, maybe cut into it in another year's time, I don't know, might get hungry before then, because it's not as big a harvest as usual. Oh, I haven't done the count, have I? I'll do the count at the end. So, yeah, um, if you've got, you see, somewhere like a shed or a garage, it might get too cold if you drop sort of towards freezing you don't want them to get frozen at all because then as they warm up again they'll turn to mush so yeah just somewhere cool and dry or even like at home warm and dry although I suppose what's my I suppose the temperature in my flat throughout the winter for example it would never get above 22 degrees even with the heating on it's about 22 It'll get as cool in there as about sort of 15 degrees. I could put them on my um, hall staircase. What I'm trying to say is they don't need any special storage. Store them wherever you've got space. Under the bed, back of the wardrobe. Use them as and when you fancy. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, that's what, I got distracted by the thought of counting them. I was talking about leaving my bottom ups till last. Um, I've tried all sorts of different varieties over the years, all sorts and some of them don't store as well. So for instance, Delicata I have found in the past don't store as well. I didn't bother growing any this, any this year because they're a devil to grow. They just don't like growing for me. They grow and I might get one fruit on a whole plant. Anyway, so if you've got a new variety this year, so for me, that's the Blue Ballet. It's gorgeous color, isn't it? It's more like, it's a sort of grey, greyish sage, faded duck egg. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous colour. 
but the ball blue ballet and the little gold nugget as they are new to me this year I'll keep a close eye on them I might use them first but yeah I'll certainly keep a close eye on them just in terms of for storage the sweet dumplings next to them which I think are just out of shot this was is it my second or third year I don't know it's not my first it ain't my first rodeo put it that way they stored really well last year so I'm happy with those the muskeg that stored really well last year what I don't know about which is down there is the Long Island cheese you know they look they've all got really tough skins I'm thinking it might store really quite well and quite long so but the point I'm trying to make <laughs> I'm too giddy I'm too giddy to make points succinctly is to say just keep an eye on them especially new varieties to you right let's have a quick oh my goodness count up do you know what it is when I saw Kay earlier I stopped and chatted for I think a little bit too long because I was stood up and it's kippered my knees for the rest of the day okay one two three four there's one more in the um, thing what you call the trolley what's it called wheelbarrow one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty i didn't try and guess twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven okay so blimey twenty seven squash in total that will give me one squash per fortnight However, with something like the gold nuggets, they're really tiny, so I'd eat two in one go. However, however, the muskay and the Long Island cheese, I'm just thinking, would I use a quarter? Do you know what? Probably eighths. So in a way, the amount of flesh in here is going to be the equivalent for me of eight of your average size butternuts, maybe six. Um, and then I've got a couple of whopper butternuts there's so much flesh in that that's probably more like two of the sort of butternuts you'd buy in the supermarket it is heavy so i think all in all it would probably equate to about one squash per week which is fab absolutely fab and what i find with the way i eat them i don't think i'm gonna be having much roast squash this winter we're all keeping our ovens off but um, I tend to eat most of my squash through the autumn, winter and spring. I tend to have it as a, as a hearty warming type, whether I'm having it as curry. I think I'll be having a lot of it as curry because that's quicker on the stove top. Curry, soup, that sort of thing. Gorgeous. And then by the time I get to about April, I've usually, in past years, I've had maybe 10, 12 left that can see me right through to the following harvest. Actually, that would be more like the end of May, so then I'd have June, July. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't matter. I'll do my own rationing and maths in my own time. But I think what I'm trying to say is that's one squash a week for the next 12 months. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Can't wait to... When I just said before about squash curry, <laughs> I did a big saliva. Uh, yeah, I'm salivating at the thought of eating. Oh God, you know what I've got to do though before I even think about eating them? <laughs> oh Lord, help me. I've got to get them home. Obviously, I am not going to get them all home in one go. Impossible. But the other thing today, I've brought a load more Tupperware. I've got, I've got a mountain like this of green tomatoes still to get home. So, I think what I will do is, I think I'll get the green tomatoes home first because these are going to be more robust, especially with that bit of protection of the shed. I can't put these in the shed yet because there's no space. I have to make space by getting the green tomatoes out, but these are going to be all over the floor and the shelves of the shed. I love this time of year when getting all my food home is an issue because it means I've got a lot of food to get home. Hurrah! It's like, I always think this for sort of September and October, it's like the covenant of doing a weekly shop every single day for two months. Brilliant. Love it. Bring it on. 
All right, lovelies, thank you so much for joining me for the annual squash harvest. <laughs> um, I'm really happy with it because it hasn't been an easy year. We've all struggled in different ways this year, but so, and I've said, there have been so many times throughout the year when I've said, let's just be grateful for whatever morsels we do get. And you know what? I've got quite a few morsels here, so I am happy grateful quite relieved too actually all right lovelies it's getting so noisy down here i'll see you soon for the next one not sure not sure what i'll be doing i might be yeah i don't know but i'll see you then for that wherever it is until then take care please all of you cheerio